Step 3. Experimental secret sharing. We're not going to leave secret sharing just yet. We're going to show you that it, in fact it was demonstrated in a laboratory setting with real physical qubits. So the question that we want to start with is how can we create a 3 qubit GHZ state in a network? This is our target state. We represent it uh, by drawing these uh, vertices for every qubit and connecting them with edges representing that they are entangled. Mathematically, this is the state that we are aiming for. A GHZ state for three qubits is an equal superposition of three zeros and three ones. In fact, there are two approaches how we can create a GHZ state. The first one is to create the state locally at one of the nodes and then teleport two of the qubits to the desired parties. So we could create it at A and then teleport one qubit of the GHZ set to B and another qubit of the GHZ set to C while A retains the remaining qubit. Approach 2 uh, uses a different method. It uses the distributed Bell pairs and local operations to create the state without teleportation. So let's go over these two approaches in more detail. This is approach number one. Here we have node A and B and C representing by these big blue circles. And they are sharing Bell pairs. A is entangled with B and also B is sharing a Bell pair, entangled Bell pair with C. Next, node B generates the three qubit GHZ state. So node B must have some other, other qubit supply that it can use to create a GHZ state locally. Then node B performs Bell state measurements on these qubits. So it takes one of the qubits from the GHZ state and one of the qubits sitting uh, in the quantum memory being part of an entangled pair between node B and C. That's the red BSM. The orange BSM does something similar. It picks one of the qubits and performs a two qubit measurement on that qubit and the quantum memory qubit that's uh, sitting in B, but this time it's entangled with another qubit sitting in quantum memory at node A. Then it shares the outcomes, classical outcomes of the Bell state measurements with nodes C and A. And this creates a three qubit GHZ state between the memory qubits in A and C and one of the qubits that were part of the locally created GHZ state at node B. Let's look at approach uh, number two. Again, starting point is the same. Nodes A, B and C share two Bell pairs, A and B and B and C. Then B implies an entangling operation between the qubits sitting on those two quantum memories. And it measures out one of the qubits locally. Again, it sends the classical outcome of this measurement to nodes C and A, and this projects the remaining unmeasured qubits into a GHZ state. So we can see that approach number one uses quite a lot of qubits. Also, it requires teleportation. How we do teleportation is important. For example, we could do it hop by hop if the GHZ state that we're trying to share is not between neighboring nodes. For example, B might have to teleport its qubit over many hops to a distant node. If this is the case, then the final fidelity is not very good. So we have to be wary of that. We might want to first establish an end-to-end -end connection between node B and a far node C. Uh, and purified to achieve much higher fidelity of the shared pair between them and then execute the teleportation. Approach number two, on the other hand, share, uh, uses far fewer qubits. And also it doesn't use any teleportation whatsoever. So in that sense, it seems a lot simpler. And in fact, we will talk about this approach again in lesson 14 because this approach was used to uh, demonstrate experimentally in a laboratory in 2021 that in fact, yes, you can create GHZ state between non-neighboring nodes of a network. Now let's return to our experimental secret sharing and talk about how uh, secret sharing was in fact demonstrated in a laboratory. So in, in that experiment, a photonic GHZ state was created in fact, it wasn't quite a GHZ state, but we will talk about it later and why it's not so important. It was a state that mimicked the correlations of a GHZ state. 
We will explain what that means shortly. The experiment was carried out by Wolfgang Tittel and his collaborators in the year 2000 at the University of Geneva. And it used a form of entanglement known as energy time entanglement. This type of entanglement and this approach has been used to demonstrate two party QKD. So uh, it, um, it was a good, uh, good way of demonstrating secret sharing as well. This is the schematic view of the experimental setup. Here in the middle is the source of the photonic GHZ uh, state. And then one of the qubits is, is sent uh, upwards and is split by a beam splitter. It can follow a path on the left, which represents our zero state, or it can follow a path on the right, which represents our one state. These optical elements, this orange one, is a phase shifter that um, introduces a particular phase shift alpha. If you remember, these three uh, phase shifts are important in the secret sharing um, protocol from the previous step. Then the two, uh, two paths are um, uh, interfered together at a beam splitter, and then we've got two detectors which either click or don't click. If the left detector clicks, then we count this as a plus one outcome of the measurement. If the detector on the right clicks, then this we count as a minus one outcome of our measurement. And similarly for the other two photons that are part of the GHZ state coming from the source. So to take it back into our um, network uh, view of the whole situation, the here all of these elements at the top represent node A, these represent node B, and these nodes, uh, these elements uh, represent node C. So the probability of finding the photons at various output ports is given by this following expression. We've got a normalization of 1 over 8, and then we have uh, 1 plus i, j, k times cosine of alpha plus beta plus gamma. This is a little bit different than what we uh, showed in the previous step, but I encourage you to go back and show that in fact uh, this probability can be computed from the probability amplitudes which we showed in the previous step when we discussed the theoretical part of the secret sharing protocol. The actual experiment was slightly different. And that's because it used energy time entanglement, which is basically like a time being encoded qubits, which we talked about in our module. So only two entangled photons existed at one time of the experiment. So it seems like it wasn't really a GHZ state. That's why the authors called it a pseudo-GHZ state. But in fact, this is not a problem, because the probability of detection events was still the same as the one that we presented in the previous slide, or the one that we presented in the previous step. And this was experimentally verified. Here are some numbers that the experimentalists managed to obtain. The secret bit generation rate was 15 bits per second, or 15 hertz. And the estimated range of, uh, of uh, this scheme was between 30 to 40 kilometers. So even if the nodes were separated 30 to 40 kilometers from the source, um, secret bits could have been generated. And this was done for these particular numbers of attenuation uh, in the fiber of 0.35 dB per kilometer. This is in fact by today's standards quite high and one could assume even better attenuation numbers of 0.2 or even below that. And they also considered the noise introduced by the shifters to be 3 dB. This concludes our experimental uh, uh, discussion of secret sharing.